Hi everyone, welcome back to the afternoon on the first day here at uh, the Red Cloud Mining Fall show Showcase We're with Malcolm Dorsey, who is the president CEO and everything at, <laughs> at Tor Metals. Uh, this is district scale. You've got BC, you've got Ontario, you've got gold, you've got copper, uh, both great things in the news a lot. Tell us where you're at, tell us what you think of the conference so far as well and what Tor is up to. Yeah, thanks for having me. First of all, this is it's been a great conference, great opportunity to gain exposure on the stories that Tor has to offer. I think one of the unique opportunities with Tor is that it's really an early stage copper and gold opportunity. Uh, we have all of our projects, almost 1200 square kilometers of copper and gold projects. They're all 100% owned, all highway accessible. We've got about three large scale copper gold porphyry targets that are drill ready. And with that, we also have six orogenic gold targets in Northern Ontario that we're moving towards drill ready status as well. So a lot to look forward to in the upcoming months. So a lot of work has gone in to establish these targets. Uh, it's a, I guess it's a matter of, of drilling them. So that's gonna be the next stage. Uh, tell us about that process of finding those targets. Like uh, how long did that take or what, what kind of went into that? Yeah. They often say like, the more time is put into the planning, uh, of course, you got to get lucky with the drill bit, but a lot of the work is leading up to that drill. Yeah, certainly. So these projects were organically grown in-house by the company. So we spent a long time doing our due diligence. We decided on the regions that we want to be. We want to be in prolific copper and gold regions. That's why we're focused in the southern Quinell Trough in British Columbia. That's because when you look at the numbers, that hosts three of the five largest copper producing mines in Canada. That includes the Highland Valley mine, Canada's largest open pit mine, only 30 kilometers to the northwest of our Colos Copper Gold project. And then we also want to focus and diversify into orogenic gold. Same thing, a long due diligence process before we stake the project. Both of these projects are well over 200 square kilometers in size. So they're big, they're district scale, they have multiple undrilled targets. So I mean, the great thing with that like district scale, I mean, that's what you want. You want scale uh, and these types of ore bodies, certainly a, a porphyry system, that, that's a, often a lot of holes, a lot of work. Uh, what have you guys been finding so far uh, with, with finding your targets and, and what you're looking for? Yeah, so what really attracted us to it was the fact that there is outcrop mineralization at both of these projects, never <laughs> been drilled in the case of Colos. It's 0.52% copper, over four grams per ton gold. We did a ZTEM geophysical survey that shows a coincidence with these anomalies that's open beyond a kilometer depth. Okay, yeah. Uh, this is also coincident with four kilometers of copper and gold soil anomalies. So very large system at play there. And then same thing with Fillion. It's got some high grade historical samples over 91 grams per ton gold. Oof. Never followed up on before adjacent to the Trans Canada Highway. We've now established a gold soil anomaly that's 1200 meters in strike length. Uh, we've got paralleling gold anomalies across a two kilometer width to a very large structural corridor. And what we're doing right now, we've just mobilized field crews to really expand on that at Fillion as it's drill permitted. Uh, we're going to test it for a full seven kilometer strike length, some historical indicators for high prospectivity along this strike length. And then that is where we'll be able to move on, identify the best possible drill targets for a future potential made in drill program. Uh, and to get to that made in drill program, uh in the news right now is, is a lot about gold. I mean, it's not stopping. Like mm -hmm. we kind of talked about Costco is selling gold bars. They're flying up off the shelves. Uh, more and more people are getting interested. And I guess why that's relevant is that you guys uh, will be looking to raise some money as well for this, this made drill program and to get you there. Well, tell me a little bit about that, what that looks like uh, for someone if they say, hey, listen, I, I like what you're saying. Uh, how do I get involved with this? Yeah, so right now we're very tightly held with 36 million shares outstanding just over 3 million market cap, so plenty of torque on our share structure. Yeah. Uh, with that, we are doing a small raise right now of 600,000. That will be put into work that we're doing at surface geochemical work at the Fillion project. Okay. Yep. This is what will establish our drill targets, yep. and then we'll be looking towards doing a future 
drill program as well. Excellent. Uh, what are some things short term and maybe even, even longer term too? So if someone uh, can keep a kind of a checklist, like like milestones, what should they be looking for? Say from now to Christmas, you know, people's attention span is, you know, not, <laughs> it's, it's a bit tougher. There's lots of competing stories. They go, okay, what, what should I be looking at for you guys between now and Christmas to keep you in check? Yeah, so things to expect, we have our anticipated permit coming through that we think will be here later in 2024 for the Colos Copper Gold Porphyry project. Uh, we're drill permitted for filling already, but you can expect some more surface geochemical results testing that full seven kilometer strike length to the prospectivity of the system that we see. And then we have some more surface geochemical results coming from the northern portions of a new discovery that we're calling the Sonic Zone on the Colos project later this year as well. And I, I, I'm kind of jumping around here, but the Colos one you'd mentioned, a depth this could be deep how is it also shallow is there like is it shallow to depth or is this like no this is gonna be underground it's you're a kilometer down oh that's a good question <laughs> so so what we've seen we've got outcrop mineralization yeah that's indicative of the upper portions of porphyry yeah. but we're also looking at good mineralization from surface we're seeing this in the soils as well okay and then our geophysics are showing that this system looks quite pristine, continuing to depth. It's over a kilometer in depth and continues as far as we can see. So that's a nice situation to have if, if you have a decent amount at uh, shallow depth and then you've got a, you know, a lot you can chase down. Oh, definitely. All that's left is truth at the end of the drill. <laughs> yeah. And so what about uh, the Ontario property, the Filion? What, what uh, same, is that shallow-ish? Uh, that one. I mean, those well, are like spider veins often in, in Quebec and yeah. Ontario. It's like, like, like roots in a tree. <laughs> yeah, so we are seeing from historical work and trenching that was done on the area, there's actually a very thin till veneer. Okay. But underneath that is rock outcrop with high grade gold. Uh, with that, nobody's really tested out the width of this high grade gold or with any historical drilling. There's also no work that's been done towards a bulk tonnage. Okay. So this is really all up for grabs for us to do for Tor to check out. And that's something that we're very excited about with the Philean project. Excellent. Well, Malcolm, thanks so much. I appreciate you. There's a lot, that's a lot to work with there, a lot of the story to develop, and we all keep a good eye on it. Everybody, thanks, thanks for so much. having me. Take care. Yeah.